There's a gentleman on tier who is Lord Roger of Belden Abbey, and he has written many a tale of the times of King Henry. And I bring to you the tale of King Henry and the dragon. In the early days of good King Henry's reign, high up in the northern mountains of the kingdom, there lived a poor woodsman and his family. Life in the mountains was difficult, and although there was adequate food to eat and plenty of clear water to drink, the woodsman's children had few toys to play with and fewer friends to share them with. Now, for the boys, this was no problem, for they could hunt and fish to their heart's content. But the woodsman's one daughter, Sarah, was not thrilled with the rough play her brothers enjoyed. She did her chores and helped her mother in the cottage, but even cleaning the house could take up only so much time. One day, after helping her mother clean up all the washing, the little girl's mother said, why not take a walk and note all the different birds you can find? Taking a lunch wrapped in a piece of cloth, Sarah set out on her nature walk. She knew the local forest very well and decided to go higher and on the mountain rather than lower. She made note of the beautiful flowers and how sweetly the birds sang in the trees. She took care to mark her path, for she did not wish to get lost. After about an hour or so, she came to a large cave. She knew bears spent winters in caves, but this was summer, and all the birds, all of the bears were out in the forest. Therefore, she ventured into the cave, and soon came to a large green pile of leather. However, no sooner had she touched the leather, but it began to move, and very quickly she was faced with a large dragon's head, with a dragon's body firmly attached. Hello, said the dragon. Can I help you? Are you lost? Sarah was not quite sure what to say. She had never talked to a dragon before, but her parents had taught her proper manners, so she politely replied, No, thank you. I am not lost. I am merely exploring. Is this cave your home? Yes, indeed. Would you like to see the rest of it? Responded the dragon. I do not get many visitors, and it gets mighty lonely here all by myself. Sarah knew what it was like to be lonely, and so she agreed to the tour. And she and the dragon walked through the cave, and they continued their conversation. Have you, have you lived here a long time? asked the little girl. I don't remember you flying near here. I only hunt and fly at night, replied Cecil, for that was the dragon's name. I must be careful that the people nearby do not see me, for they would surely send for a knight, and he would soon skewer me with his lance. Why would anyone want to hurt you? Well, you see, said the dragon, some of my brothers and sisters and cousins have not been good dragons, and they have made a mess of our reputation. Why would you believe that some of them actually eat people? You're not going to eat me, said the child. Oh, no, I would never do that. You are a friend, and friends do not eat friends. Besides, if I ate you, who would come back to visit me? You are going to come back and visit me, aren't you? The little girl agreed to come back, and she kept her promise. She found that the dragon was a fine playmate, and loved to let Sarah ride on his back. The dragon had a large collection of storybooks, and he and Sarah would sit and he would read to her. Sarah was not a very good reader, but with Cecil's help, she soon was reading much better. Soon she was reading Cecil's storybooks all by herself. Some of the storybooks had dragons in them, and Cecil liked those especially, except when the dragon was hurt or killed. Why do knights always like to hurt poor dragons, whined Cecil? We never go hunting them. I think the stories about are about the bad dragons, which eat little girls, replied Sarah. I'm sure no respectable knight would harm a good dragon like you. Satisfied with that answer, the little girl and the dragon resumed play playing. Sarah was busy polishing some of the dragon's scales that were in hard-to-reach spots. Now, Sarah's mother was, was glad that Sarah was no longer moping about the cottage, but soon began to wonder where she went every afternoon. Sarah did not tell her family about the dragon, as Cecil had asked her not to. They might not understand. So one day Sarah's mother sent one of her sons to follow his sister and see where she went. The answer was not long in coming. She's in a dragon's cave, said the son to his mother. It looks like the dragon is going to eat her. The little boy was not quite accurate. Even though you can understand his confusion, Sarah was cleaning the 
dragon's back teeth and was resting on his long tongue while she worked. <laughs> Sarah's mother quickly ran and told her husband, who put on his best jerkin and went to the local baron. The baron was a brave man, but he was not a knight, and he knew his limitations, and so he said word to the king about the blight that infested his lands. Good King Henry was concerned, for he had never heard of a dragon infesting his kingdom before. I thought that they were all killed ages ago, he mused. I know not of anyone ever seeing one since before my great-grandfather's day. I will have to go to the dragon and entice him to leave. If he won't, I must kill him. The king set out for the northern mountains with a large party of knights and men-at-arms. He also brought learned men with their books to research dragons and to find out how to defeat them. In a week's time, they made their way to the mountain where Sarah's family lived and bade the woodsman to show him the cave of the monster. Monster, thought Sarah. I wonder if they mean my Cecil. She took off for the dragon's cave and reached it before the king and his party. Quickly, she told Cecil what she had heard and that the king was on his way to defeat the poor dragon. What shall I do, cried the dragon. I'm too young to be killed. Sarah thought for a bit and then smiled. I have a plan. She said, this is what we need to do. The little girl and the dragon talked over Sarah's idea and waited for the king. They did not have long to wait. Come out, dragon, yelled good King Henry. Let the little girl go and come out. Sarah appeared at the entrance of the cave. He says for you to come in alone. He says, do not bring your sword. He's promised not to eat me if you do as he asks. Don't trust him, said one of the king's knights. Let me go in and vanquish the vile worm. No, responded the king. He has given his word, and my scholars tell me that dragons never lie. The king unbelted his sword and marched into the cave. Why are you threatening my subject, asked the king. Are there not enough animals in the forest for you to feed on? Why are you threatening my dragon, responded Sarah. <laughs> Have you no wars to fight or things to do that kings do? Now, Sarah, that wasn't nice, lectured Cecil. The king is doing what he is supposed to do. He's protecting you. I don't need protecting. You protect me. This was true. One day not long ago, a bear crawled into the cave and set his eyes on Sarah as a tasty snack. Cecil tried to convince the bear that little girls were not good for bears. Unfortunately, the bear was in no mood to listen to the dragon, and Cecil had to gobble him up quickly to save his friend. Still, said the dragon, it is rude for little girls to talk that way to their king. I think you need to apologize to the king. I'm sorry, said Sarah, but it is true. He does protect me. I see, said the king. So you are the girl's protector. She is my friend, your majesty, and I am hers. She keeps me company, and I am helping her learn her letters. Her reading is much better now than when she first came to call on me. A dragon who was a teacher was something new to the king. Do you like teaching her, asked Henry. Would you be willing to teach others? The northern mountain, mountainous part of the kingdom had few places of learning, and the king was always looking for people to teach the young their numbers and letters. I could handle maybe a dozen children, but my cave is not big enough for more than that. Do not worry, twelve children would be plenty, said his majesty. When could you start? Before you answer that, Cecil, what are you going to do about all those people outside, asked Sarah. They're expecting you to vanquish poor Cecil. I have an idea, said the good king. Cecil, you wait a bit and then meet me outside. Blow a little fire near me and then I will come close with my sword and pretend to strike you. They, we will put on a show that they'll talk about for years. And this is just what they did. The king went and got his sword and shield. The dragon came out and roared. Everyone was impressed. But then the king came close to the dragon and started hitting him on the scales with the flat of the sword. They both had a grand time making noise and shouting at each other lustily. Finally, Cecil called a halt. Great king, I am your servant. What must I do for you to spare me? It said the dragon in a deep voice. I need a teacher for the children in this area. Can you read and cipher? Asked his majesty. Let us go into your cave and we shall talk more about it. And the king put down his sword and shield 
and walked back into the cave with the dragon, leaving a very satisfied but slightly confused crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the king and Cecil talked for hours, hammering out their plans for a new school for the children of the area. The king would send the dragon books, paper, and pens, and would have the poor woodsmen make tables and chairs for the new students. The woodsman would become the official schoolmaster and deal with all the things that a dragon is really poorly equipped to do. And so the new king's school was started. And if there were boys and girls in other schools who fidgeted and fooled around in class, there were none in Cecil's class. <laughs> no one wanted to anger a teacher who could breathe fire 20 feet. I had a teacher like that in school. <laughs> The school was small, but the students studied hard, and their parents were well pleased with their progress. Sarah got to finish with, visit with her friend often, and as the years went by, their friendship blossomed into a lifelong admiration. Sarah grew up and eventually was married, although she still occasionally went to Cecil's cave and passed the time with her friend. However, her visits grew fewer and fewer as the years went on, she seemed, and seemed to end after one long, cold winter. Then one day, Cecil had an unexpected but welcome visitor to his cave. Cecil, I want you to meet someone, said Sarah, holding a little bundle in her arms. This is Cecilia, and she is my daughter. I named her after my best friend. The dragon smiled, for he knew that in a few years he would have a new child to teach and a new friend to take riding on his back. I have a gift for her, spoke the dragon. It is one of my scales. Some say a dragon scale gives the owner wisdom. And as the mother and her daughter walked down the path to their home, Cecil was glad that years ago, a little girl had the courage to enter a dragon's cave. <laughs>